Welcome to Tuesday, the 5th day of August 2025, your day weather podcast brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, what we're going to see here in the days ahead is some very dry air for a lot of you. Thunderstorms will be along the edges. This means very low humidities in many areas and extremely high fire danger. This is a critical phase we're in right now in the Intermountain West. With the shifting of the deeper monsoonal moisture, very low relative humidity, and that thread of thunderstorms that produce not much rain but lightning and other things, just be careful out there. Fire dangers are gonna be really, really high. Now we're going to see thunderstorms along the edges where the dry air and the moist air meet and we get daytime heating. Then we have this cold front for the weekend. Things are going to really cool off in the central and northern Rockies along and east of the divide as we get into the Saturday, Sunday, Monday time frame as a pretty strong cold front for August will come in from the northwest. Also, the second half of this podcast, we're going to say we're gonna talk about the monsoon season. Now, for some of you, it's been a monsoon, for sure. For some of you, it's been a no-soon. Why? We'll examine that. There's some reasons why things have unfolded, why they have this summer season when it comes to the monsoon moisture flow. There's some happy folks and very sad folks, depending on where you live and where you're placed in terms of the pattern across the region. Here's a photo from closer to the edges of the moisture, as you can see there in Rapid City. Nice shot of the moon from Estes Park and some pretty colors in the clouds all the way from Bishop, California. Now, speaking of fire danger, taken from a uh, firefighting aircraft up near Northwest Wyoming, near Buffalo Bill Reservoir this past weekend. Beautiful shot there. But you can see the prairie grasses are maturing, going to seed and drying out. And that's why you're concerned that something like this from last Friday could start a fire. And that's something that we've got to watch very, very carefully here in the days ahead. Nice shot of some, I think those are barley bins maybe up into Montana. And then the hummingbird photos continue to come on in. Now, here's a Nice shot of a hummingbird posing very nicely here. And then of course, we have what a lot of you are probably experiencing who put out feeders. Aaron says they're going through four cups a day. And I can believe that from what you're seeing right there. As we start the forecast section now, the we're looking at basically that high pressure ridge further west into the desert southwest. We have this active jet stream up here in the Pacific Northwest kind of cutting on through like it has really all summer. We've got a trough here in the Midwest in the Great Lakes. We're gonna end up with a big rain event in this part of the country here later on, and maybe even a tropical storm coming together later, a tropical depression. In the West though, this high where it's placed will just continue to feed in some dry air. Now we've got a tap of a little bit of moisture coming in right here, but we also got a lot of orange and red, a lot of dry air right here. The bright clouds, these colors you see up here in Montana. Overnight thunderstorms continuing into the morning hours, and that's the moisture on the edges. And there you can see it, the precipitable water by noon mountain time today really shows that moisture and where the showers and thunderstorms are going to be right along those boundaries. So the dry air really, really punching in, thunderstorms around the edges, and really that's how it's gonna go here through the work week. Look at the relative humidities by early afternoon today. So you can see the impact of that dry air. These are relative humidities. So you see all these single digits, look at that. We've got nine here in Eastern Wyoming, seven along the front range of Colorado, single digits here back into the Great Basin State. So when you, when you have rock bottoms humidities like this, this is when you really need to watch out for fire danger and any moisture that is in the ground or in the plants can go away very, very quickly. So this dry air punch is pretty significant. So this is how the thunderstorms are gonna, where they're gonna go, where they're gonna be here in the next couple of days. And you'll see certainly a pattern. So thunderstorms will be active in Montana, Northeastern Wyoming and the Dakotas. And then right along that boundary where the dry air and the moisture meet, 
There will be a little bit of isolated shower and thunderstorm activity. And these will tend to be very big wind producers because some of the rain will evaporate, causing some strong wind gusts. We will see, you'll see this here, a, a little bit of subtropical moisture trying to get into Arizona and western New Mexico here later this week. But you can see a large part of the west is going to be very dry. This is for today. This is where the thunderstorms will be tomorrow. So you can see there's a little bit of moisture trying to come back in. And then right on the edges, the boundary, there's going to be thunderstorms. Elsewhere, though, very, very dry. That's what it looks like for Thursday. And that's what it looks like for Friday. See this activity right here it does surge back up a little bit more northward and it will as we get into the start of the upcoming weekend. So the weather pattern is basically going to repeat. The thunderstorms are going to pop up in the same locations and in other locations the air will be too dry. As we get into the weekend, here's the cold front. This trough is pretty impressive for early August because the high is placed in the eastern Pacific. So the jet stream takes a dip. We have this trough come through with a pretty sizable cool front as well that'll be coming through the day Saturday and by the day on Sunday. The system will be pushing and expanding more slowly to the east, but allowing a trough to form here in the northern Rockies and the central and northern plains. This will suppress the high further south into northwest Mexico, and we continue to see the placement of this high pressure ridge in the eastern Pacific again. So what that will do is that will again stymie any prolonged August heat wave, at least here through the middle of the month. There are the temperature anomalies by noon mountain time on Saturday. So you can see a large part of the west cool. We have this sliver of really warm air getting pushed out ahead of it. Here's where the rain and thunderstorm activity will be here this weekend. When we take a look at now whether or not you've been in a monsoon or a no soon, let's rewind a little bit. So we showed you early in the spring the potential that it was going to be an enhanced monsoon season for some locations. And one reason we were expecting that was the Canadian model, which has performed remarkably well and remarkably better than some of the other well-known models like the European model and the CFS. It just was able to pick up things a little bit better. This was the three-month forecast precipitation anomaly for June, July, and August. So you can see it's been right in some areas and wrong in others. Basically, along and east of this line here, it's been pretty accurate. Now my line might not be perfect, but basically west of this line, it's been almost a no-soon. East of this line, it's been a monsoon plus, like a monsoon with an A plus behind it. It just has been very, very productive. So the Canadian model, as any model does, is never going to get it 100% right. And you never should expect it to, at least in our lifetimes here. But we've, what we want to look at trend is our friend. So the trend was there, and it was really supported by sea surface temperature anomalies, and it still is, by those water temperatures reaching a certain level. And they did, both in the Gulf of California and in the Gulf region here. So we've, we've had what we've needed to make it a much better monsoon season. It just hasn't been for everybody. If you look at precipitation over the last 90 days, it's quite striking. Now, you normally do see this. The, having the moisture be much less east of the continental, the west of the continental divide, rather, and a lot more rainfall east of the continental divide, you'd expect that. But this year, it's been amplified. It has really been quite remarkable. That line I drew a little bit earlier, showing where the monsoon was really strong and kind of the dividing line, this is where it's been in terms of where the precipitation has fallen. So it's really quite remarkable when you compare what's fallen east compared to what's fallen west. And if we take a look at the anomaly over the last 90 days, percent of normal, you can see all of the red just on the other side of the mountains. So literally, you know, Colorado and Wyoming in particular, and northwest New Mexico in particular, it just, you're so close, but things just haven't worked out right. Now, why is that? Why is it that the monsoon was able to get up into here and all the way up into Montana, all the way up into the Dakotas, but not get over here? Well, we'll show you here in a minute why. And a lot of it has to do with some of the remarks we've made about why California has had a cooler than average summer. When you look at the drought monitor, it really shows up as well. Look at this, there, there's a huge part of the country right here 
that has no drought at all whatsoever, really of any consequence. But west of the divide, we still have drought. But a lot of this part of the country, this little area here still has pockets like in Albany and Platte counties. There's still some moisture deficits, even though it's been a very wet spring, but it's come a long way, especially in this part of the country since this past winter. So let's look at temperatures for the last 90 days. Now, where it's been warmer than average, it's where it's been the driest, and you'll see that. So, so basically, that line for temperature shows where it's been driest. Temperatures have actually been cooler than average or just about average east of that line. That's because of the rain. Also, we've talked about how cool it's been along the coastal areas of California and parts of the Pacific Northwest, and it has been. This is part of the issue, this coolness. We'll show you here in a minute. And you might be thinking, well, why does a cool California, if it's cool in California, that means that monsoon got all the way into there. Well, it wasn't so much that, it's just that we've had this area of low pressure that has been a bit of an anomaly this summer along the West Coast. So if we were to take a look, I'm using a tool here that lets me look at archive data and kind of build a composite. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at 18,000 feet or 500 millibars like I show you every day. This is from June 15th to the end of July. So basically we'll, we'll call that not all of the monsoon season, but a large part of it. You see this little dimple right here? If I were to draw how the jet stream's been behaving, the, the brighter colors represent where there's been more high pressure. The cooler looking colors is where there's been more low pressure. And basically this is a composite. This is adding all of these days together and kind of averaging them out. This starts in June. And this dimple right here is representing an area of low pressure that's been more often than not in the Pacific Northwest and just off the coast of Central and Northern California. But it's much easier to see if we just look at July only. So if we look at July only, this shows the anomalies. So this is a bit of an anomalous pattern. It doesn't mean it's, it's a freak situation. It's just this happens. It's called interannual variability. You have different things happen during different years. There's no cookie cutter anything with the weather and the climate. There's always going to be variability. So this low that has been semi-permanent almost all summer has really affected wind patterns in this part of the country right here. As you can see, this shows up as an anomaly. And so what ends up happens, what is, has ended up happening is that winds of loft have been stronger here, deflecting the moisture more to the east. If this wasn't here, the monsoonal moisture would have easier chances to get further west into the Great Basin and the western slope of Colorado. So the coolness in California is a hint that the airflow has been stronger here, and it really shows up on the 300 millibar anomaly, which would be basically jet stream level. So you can see it's on the positive side of the anomaly, which means the jet stream winds have been stronger than the 30 year average. That again, deflects the monsoon moisture this way. And any time it's tried to come further west, it's gotten pushed away. So this is a little bit of, you know, something that was not foreseen. The Canadian missed it, all the other models did too. So the Canadian was right, but it was wrong in terms of not picking up this. And I will tell you, none of the other models did as well. That coolness in California and then at upper level low. When you look at the humidity anomaly from June 15th through the end of July, pretty remarkable. It really shows up here. This is why you look for patterns. You try to recognize patterns when you put it all together. Now, a lot of people, especially friends in the Midwest and the Corn Belt, they've just been complaining about how bad the humidity has been this year. Well, it has been. Look at this anomaly and notice right where it goes, or right along and east of the Continental Divide, there's your opposite anomaly where it's been drier. This is because the shunting eastward of the deeper subtropical moisture of the monsoon has been directed more east from the Continental Divide front range points east because it's been displaced east by this persistent area of low pressure off the coast of California. And the surface precipitation rate, again, if we, if we put together the anomalies, it starts to really show that. So we can blame that low that's been sitting off the coast of California 
for the very poor monsoon season in Arizona, northwest New Mexico, Utah, the western parts of Wyoming, and the western parts of Colorado, and into the Great Basin states. But it's been a much more concentrated, very wet pattern along and east of the Continental Divide where that moisture has been shunted into those areas more consistently. Have yourself a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow.